Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Measuring Antennas with a ZPH. In this presentation, we'll show you how to make basic antenna measurements using the Rodian Schwartz ZPH Portable Cable and Antenna Analyzer. This presentation covers the essential information needed to make basic antenna measurements with the ZPH, but please see the presentation, Understanding VNA's Antenna Measurements, if you're interested in learning more about this topic. There are actually two types of antenna measurements. One type of measurement is radiation measurements, which describe how well the antenna radiates a signal. This includes the antenna's gain and directivity, beam width, efficiency, etc. However, in this presentation, we'll be looking at the other type, which is antenna impedance measurements. The impedance of an antenna determines how much of the input, or transmitted power, is absorbed or radiated by the antenna, and how much is returned to the transmitter. This is done by injecting a signal into an antenna and then measuring the magnitude and phase of the signal reflected or returned from the antenna. This will change, often substantially, as a function of frequency. There are several different methods or tools that can be used for measuring antenna impedance, but the preferred method is using a vector network analyzer to perform a reflection or S11 measurement, and this is the method used by the ZPH. The Rodian Short ZPH cable and antenna analyzer contains both an integrated tracking generator as well as an internal VISWAR bridge. The tracking generator is an RF signal source whose frequency can follow or track the measurement sweep. This signal is used both as the input to the antenna as well as the reference for the measurement results. The integrated VISWAR bridge enables the ZPH to make reflection measurements on antennas by separating the forward and reverse power. Both scalar or magnitude measurements and vector or phase measurements can be made with a ZPH. And measurement results can be also displayed in a variety of formats. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll go step by step through how to perform various antenna measurements using the ZPH. There are six basic steps in making antenna impedance measurements. Connecting the antenna, configuring the source or tracking generator, configuring the measurement frequency range, performing a one-port calibration, selecting the display format, and viewing and or analyzing the results. Let's start with connecting the antenna. In most cases, a feed line is used to connect a transmitter to an antenna, or more precisely, to the antenna feed point. Because antennas generally work best when they are mounted in high or unobstructed locations, such as on a tower, the feed point may be very difficult to access, and therefore antenna measurements are often made at the transmitter end of the feed line. There are two methods for connecting a feed line to the ZPH. The first is simply connecting the feed line directly to the RF output port. The second is using a short, high-quality DUT or device under test cable. This is often done for ease of attachment or to avoid strain on the instrument connector. Measurement accuracy is unaffected by the stut cable as long as calibration takes this cable into account. We'll talk about this more in detail in just a couple of moments. The tracking generator or signal source is configured by pressing the scale amplitude hard key and then selecting TG power from the menu. Note that the tracking generator power can also be viewed and edited directly from the main ZPH screen. The maximum configurable output power is 0 dBm. Care should be taken not to set the tracking generator output power too low, since this can lead to inaccurate measurement results when the feeders have high loss. On the ZPH, antenna measurements are made in cable and antenna mode. To enter this mode, press the Mode Hard key on the front of the ZPH, and then choose Cable and Antenna from the list of available on-screen options. Next, press the Measure Hard key and select either Return Loss or SWR for performing antenna impedance measurements. We also need to specify the frequency range over which the antenna will be tested. This should cover the intended operating frequency range. To define the frequency range, press the Frequency Distance Hard key, and then either enter the Start and Stop frequencies, or enter these as Center and Span instead. The number of measurement or trace points over the span can also be specified 
by pressing the sweep hard key and choosing number of points. A greater number of points will provide greater detail, particularly over wide frequency ranges, but this will also increase measurement time. Before making any antenna measurements, a one port calibration should be performed. This process involves sequentially attaching an open, a short, and a match, or load, to the location where the antenna under test or its feed line will be connected. These standards can be in the form of discrete standards, or may be combined into a calibration T. In addition to these manually attached standards, electronic calibration units can also be used. These switch their internal standards in and out automatically, and are controlled by the ZPH. Regardless of which type of standards are used, the process is started by pressing the CalSpan hard key, full one port, and selecting the calibration kit. Then simply follow the prompts to run the calibration process. If the antenna under test will be directly connected to the ZPH, then the calibration standards, or calibration unit, should also be connected directly to the RF output port on the ZPH. If, on the other hand, a DUT cable is used, then the calibration standards are connected to the end of this DUT cable. Calibrating at this point will remove the effects of the DUT cable from the measurement. Measurements run automatically when the antenna under test is attached. Here is an example of an antenna reflection measurement. In this case, we're looking at SWR as a function of frequency between 350 MHz and 500 MHz. Over the next few slides, we'll go through some examples of analyzing or measuring the properties of an antenna from a measurement trace. Markers are enabled by using the marker hard key, and these can be used to numerically measure antenna characteristics. Up to six markers can be placed on a trace, and these can be either absolute markers or delta markers, which show the difference between marker values. You can toggle between types by pressing marker type. The functions provided under set marker can also be used to automatically place markers on the peak or minimum values of the displayed trace. Let's start by using markers to find the resonant frequency and bandwidth of this antenna. The antenna can be considered resonant at the frequency with the lowest SWR, which in this case is approximately 474 MHz. We'll define our antenna bandwidth as the range over which SWR is less than 2. Using markers, we can determine the lower bandwidth limit of 472.25 MHz and the upper bandwidth limit of 479.5 MHz, meaning that our antenna has a bandwidth of approximately 7.25 MHz. Note that in this case, the bandwidth is not perfectly centered around the resonant frequency. Antenna bandwidth is also commonly defined in terms of return loss, typically the range over which return loss is greater than 10 dB. For this antenna, display format has been set to return loss. We set a lower marker and an upper marker, and looking at the difference between these points, we get an antenna bandwidth of approximately 9 MHz. The last display format we'll look at is the Smith chart. Unlike SWR and return loss, the Smith chart displays complex impedances, that is, both magnitude and phase. As with the other display formats, markers can be placed on the Smith chart, and these will provide the complex impedance at a given frequency. We don't have time to go into details about the Smith chart in this presentation, but note that the best impedance match, corresponding to the lowest SWR, or highest return loss, will be the point closest to the center of the Smith chart. Let's end with a brief summary. The Rodin Schwartz ZPH is a cable and antenna analyzer that can be used to measure the impedance of antennas. This is done by means of the analyzer's internal tracking generator and Viswar bridge. No additional external devices or accessories are needed to make antenna measurements. However, one port calibration is needed before making measurements, and this requires either manually attached calibration standards or an automatic calibration unit. Keep in mind that a feed line and or DUT cable are often connected between the ZPH and the antenna under test. Measurement parameters and display modes are user-adjustable, and the most common of these are standing wave ratio, 
return loss, and the Smith chart. Markers can be placed to obtain precise numeric measurements. And although this presentation has been focused on antenna measurements, the methods and settings used for measuring antennas can often also be applied to other one-port devices. This concludes our presentation, Measuring Antennas with a ZPH. If you'd like more information about network or antenna measurements, or network analyzers from Rodian Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.